In every discovery, there is trial and there is error. There is experimentation and there is failure. And sometimes we're just plain wrong. Even the best discoveries come from an idea that's really spaced out. People come up with the wildest theories about space. Some scientists believe that our sun has a twin somewhere out in the galactic plane. Now that sounds like science fiction. Are you sure you didn't see that on one of those late night horror shows? Well, scientists have found compelling evidence that the sun has a twin, a dark star whose eccentric orbit is responsible for periodically showering the Earth with comets and meteorites. According to these scientists, that's why mass extinctions have occurred roughly every 26 million years. So does the sun really have a twin? If so, when the end of the world comes, we'll know what to blame. Named Nemesis, after the Greek goddess of vengeance, our celestial twin is thought to be a brown dwarf that spins round the sun in an orbit between 1 to 1.4 light years away. Nemesis is a brown star. Those are usually stars with a low mass, so they can't sustain hydrogen-burning nuclear fusion reactions, meaning they've cooled down so much they no longer emit light and we can't see them. So have they found this Nemesis twin star yet? Well, not yet. But it can't just be a coincidence that we get bombarded by meteors every 26 million years. Scientists think that every 26 million years, Nemesis's orbit brings it within just one light year of our solar system. It's close enough to affect the most far out asteroids and comets floating in the Oort cloud. If you didn't already know, the Oort cloud is that huge region surrounding our solar system that contains billions of pieces of cosmic rubble left over from the formation of planets. If Nemesis gets this close, its massive gravitational force could throw comets and asteroids out of their stable orbits and send them hurling towards the center of our solar system. Some of these stray objects might hit the Earth. There's also geological and paleontological evidence to support this theory. Just take a look at some of the huge craters that pock Earth's surface. Created by asteroids, they coincide with the planet's mass extinctions, which again happens every 26 million years, when Nemesis' orbit would be closest to our solar system and the Oort cloud. The asteroid that hit Earth 148 million years ago almost killed the dinosaurs. Then the dinosaurs are like, yay, we live! And then the one that hit 65 million years ago actually did take out the dinosaurs, and they were like, we die! That dinosaur-killing asteroid is believed to have hit just off the Yucatan Peninsula at a site called Sheik Salud. The crater is from 150 to 300 kilometers in diameter, making it the biggest known crater on the Earth. Geologists believe that shockwave may have released an estimated 500 zettajoules of energy, equivalent to 100 teratons of TNT. What I want to know is, if we find this nemesis, can we figure out the future position of asteroids that may hurl Earthward? All I want to do is stay informed about the end of the Earth, that's all. I want to throw a big party. If there really were a dark star doing all this damage, it would have to be relatively massive to really affect the comets and asteroids in the Oort cloud. So it'd be pretty difficult to do anything to stop it. And should we be seeing the effects of gravity from it tugging at the sun? Wouldn't we see the sun's rotation tilt slightly lopsided? Well, the answer may be that right now. Nemesis is orbiting too far away for the sun to be affected. We may not notice anything today, but while we're standing here debating it, it's coming. It's, it's coming. Nemesis is coming. Nemesis is coming. It's, Nemesis is coming. You have lost your mind. But if it's out there, then we better cover our heads because I'm not going to get hit. Klaus, would you ready my space vehicle? Rockets Prime ready for blast off. Thank you. That's what we call spaced out.